Well, it's Module 8. That means it's the last week of TECM 5191. Let's talk about what remains to be done. The Gantt chart shows there's no midweek deadlines because it's a short week. The term ends at midnight on Friday. At that time, your web portfolio and reflective memo are due, and you should have completed the post-course survey. There are no instructional materials for Module 8. Instead, I'll cover what I believe you need to know about these assignments in this overview video. Remember that in the Module 7 overview, I described how your web portfolio will be evaluated. This week, I've allocated five of the eight coursework hours to this assignment. Remember, you have to submit a URL for a hosted website targeted for employers. It's got to have an About Me plus at least two pages with TECM 5191 artifacts. I'll also be evaluating the style, tone, and mechanics of your site as well as its organizational structure at both the micro and macro level and visual design in WordPress. I haven't said anything yet about the importance of the narrative that you create about each artifact in your portfolio, but it's critically important. The recruiting firm Robert Half described the importance of establishing the context of artifacts in your portfolio in an article that's linked within this assignment on Canvas. One effective way to establish context is to use what's commonly called the STAR method, often described when guiding job applicants to answer interview questions. STAR is an acronym standing for Situation, Task, Action, and Results. Let's take a look at a sample narrative about a portfolio artifact to help you see how you can apply the STAR method to describe its context. We're visiting an actual portfolio site for someone that I don't know, whose name is Clem, and describes himself as a product content strategist. We're looking at one of the artifacts on his site that he chose to represent his content strategy and UX writing skills. You could visit the page yourself at the URL that I'll show you when I complete the discussion. The artifact in this case is a website for an organization called CMX Media. First, I'm going to scroll all the way through the page. Then we'll go back and look at some specifics. There's a quote from someone at the client site. Overview. Defining the challenge. Approach. still in approach, and then finally, outcome. Clem used four level one headings to chunk his narrative. Let's go back to overview, which is the first. The narrative in this section mostly describes the situation, the who, what, and when involved when Clem began working on the website for CMX. It also describes a little of Clem's task or why he was involved in the situation. Now we're going to look at the second level heading, defining the challenge. The narrative here mostly describes why Clem was needed. The bullets describe the tasks Clem thought most relevant in his work on the CMX website. So there were no clear audience needs or goals being met by the previous site, not sure if the content was meeting its business objectives. Because the third level one heading is lengthy, we're going to skip ahead to the fourth and final. Outcome. The narrative here describes the results, the value that Clem's work delivered for the website owner. Note how specific those outcomes or results are. Grew the email list by over 50% in the summer months. Increased weekly traffic to the CMX website by 60% and doubled its return visitors. And again, there's another quote from the client. All right, finally, let's go back to the third level one heading, Approach. It's by far the longest or meatiest portion of content. Just under 50% of the text on the entire page about this artifact or website is included in Approach. There are five subheadings and five visuals in this section, and that makes good sense. Clem is selling his skills as an approach to content strategy. Even with a different organization or a different type of website, he would use the tools he mentions. Card sorting, 
Google Analytics, Personas, SEO strategy. He would use all of those with another client. Although Clem doesn't list tools and techniques separately, there are many mentioned. I just called out some of them within the narrative. So I don't want to suggest that Clem's portfolio site is perfect. It might benefit from some editing to make the text more concise and the visual layout more clear. However, the narrative definitely serves as a great example of how the STAR method can guide you in developing narrative to accompany your own portfolio artifacts by describing situation, task, actions, and results. This week I've estimated you should spend around two and one half hours creating your reflective memo. As a grad requirement, students working toward the MA have to present a print and web portfolio along with a reflective essay that passes faculty review. Your work on the reflective memo for TECM 5191 should help you advance toward that goal. If you're a TechCom MA student, you should review the information about writing a reflective essay in the TechCom Portfolio Review Guidelines. There's a link to those in the reflective memo assignment on Canvas. Let me give you a summary of how I will evaluate your work on this assignment. The content requirements include describing how what you learned in the course influenced the choices or decisions you made when creating each artifact. You must also incorporate sources into your discussion. You're expected to write between 500 and 750 words in the memo. That doesn't include the page where references to the sources are listed. Of course, I will also evaluate the quality of your writing, organization, style, mechanics. See the rubric for the assignment on Canvas with a few more details. To help you succeed in this assignment, which is worth 10% of your overall grade in the course, I want to show you a sample memo. Remember that unlike your web portfolio, the memo, like the essay, is directed toward the grad faculty and tech comm. Our interests are in how you've applied what you've learned in your coursework to each of the artifacts included in your portfolio. For this assignment, you may mention other courses, but you may not omit TECM 5191. Note that the document is formatted as a memo addressed to me. Let's look at the first paragraph under Single Source Publishing. The student here specifies which artifacts are relevant and mentions specific concepts learned in the course. The student also includes in-text citations citing specific sources. I'm showing those in yellow highlights to make it easier for you to see them. Remember that for this course, sources are listed at the bottom of each module's instructional materials page. The complete source for those in-text citations in the memo appears at the end on a reference page. This task is far easier if you use reference management software. Two free examples are Zotero and Mendeley. Let me briefly show you how the Mendeley plugin for Word works. If I want to add an in-text citation to Mark Baker's EPPO discussion on his blog site, I place my cursor where I want the citation to appear. Note that it goes before the period. I go to the References tab and click on Insert Citation on the ribbon. When the pop-up appears, I click on the Go to Mendeley button. Then I highlight the source I want to cite in Mendeley and click the Cite button at the top. Now Mendeley has added the new in-text citation, and it has also added the source to my list of references at the end, all formatted. Note that the Mendeley plugin allows you to choose a reference system. I'm currently using APA, but I could switch to MLA with one click. I'm showing you those because they're the two options for your final reflective essay in the MA program. I encourage you to start using Mendeley or Zotero and adding sources from your courses now to make your job easier at the end of the program. I also encourage you to include your efforts to improve self-regulated learning while you were learning new digital literacies in this course. Feel free to expand upon what you've already written in weekly discussion posts when you updated us about those efforts. SPOT is what UNT calls our student evaluations. Please don't forget to complete your evaluation this week. 
Well, that's all I've got for you. Use the assignments channel on Slack or reach out to me directly if you need my help. It's been terrific watching you grow in the course. I wish you the very best on the rest of your journey.